Hi, Lisa DeHart here today. Today, the subject of my short video is how do you bottom line yourself? In coaching school, and I hear coaches talk about this a lot in different places besides coaching school, which is this idea that we need to be bottom lining our clients. We want them to get to the succinct, concise point of what it is they want to be working on in coaching. And while there is nothing wrong with getting to the heart of the matter with your client and getting down to what is most important from all of these different things that you're bringing forward or what is the connection between all these things that you're bringing forward that would be useful for us to explore today, nothing wrong with that. There's also the fact that coaches need to bottom line themselves. And so I see it show up in a multitude of ways. The first way that I see it when I'm doing mentor coaching with a with a uh, coach client is that we'll run their trans we'll run a transcript analysis through Ray Notes. Everybody knows I love Ray Notes, and so we'll upload their audio, and then we'll see after they've cleaned it up how much time had, did the coach spend talking, and how much time did the client spend talking. In a recent mentor coaching session, I had the coach and I were looking at this and the coach spoke for 20 minutes while the client spoke for 17. Already, that's pretty even. And what we want to see in coaching is that the coach is asking questions that really invite the client to do more of the heavy lifting in the conversation. So that we're asking questions around what are you noticing as you hear yourself bring up these topics that are important to you as a place for us to begin. Only the client knows the answer to that question and they're probably going to have to think about it. And they're also probably going to need to be the one to explore what that means to them. Like, where do they want to start? Or when you are talking about stress in this particular situation, where do you notice that show up in yourself? What, what's the first indicator of that? The client is going to have to do all the heavy lifting of figuring out what's the first indicator of stress when that situation comes up. I, as the coach, can't tell them that, oh, you're probably noticing that your hands start to tingle, like maybe their hands don't start to tingle. So again, by asking open-ended questions that invite the client to do some insight-oriented work, we're going to get them talking more. The other thing that happens is that coaches make a lot of statements and add closed-ended questions. And so what you'll end up hearing in a call where the coach is speaking equal to or more than the client, what you'll hear are questions where the client is responding with, yeah, mm-hmm, well, yeah, right, yes. And they are just really monosyllabic <laughs> sorts of answers that they're giving the coach based on the questions that they're being asked or the statements that they're hearing. Coaches can be very good at reflecting back what they hear the client say, and that is useful to a degree, but at some point even there, it is incredibly useful for the coach to learn how to bottom line what it is that they heard. What's the underlying thread of what it is that you just heard the client say? I don't need to say, client, I heard you say X, Y, Z. I can say something to the effect of what I'm hearing is this idea of X, Y, Z. So I'm trying to think of a good example of this. The client says, you know, I've been really working hard and I've been feeling overwhelmed and I have a really full plate and I just don't know what to do because it feels like I'm just trying to juggle too many different things and I'm all over the place and I'm feeling super scattered. Instead of coming back and saying to the client, I heard you say that you are feeling really scattered and overwhelmed and you're juggling plates and it's just all very overwhelming to you, right? which of course the client's gonna be like, yes. The coach instead can say something to the effect of, I'm really hearing the overfull plate and the juggling. What about that would be important for us to explore? In this way, we've bottom lined what it is that we heard the client say for ourselves. And we've asked an open-ended question that then invites the client to determine 
what's important for them to explore. So I hope this is useful today as you consider how do you bottom line yourself in your own coaching? It's a very valuable skill set and tool, and it will in help it will help your clients to have more of their own awarenesses show up. Because remember, what we know and think in our own mind, that's the stuff that we remember. And we want our clients to remember the coaching. Cheers. I hope you do well with this. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this particular video. Bye-bye.